The whole issue as to whether radioactivity can or cannot be used as the next world fuel stands or falls upon one issue alone. And that issue is whether science can protect organic life from extinction or whether it cannot. Our contention is that it cannot. Radiation is the normal death principle. Everything in nature dies normally by slowly radiating its heat. Radioactivity is the explosively quick death principle. Radioactivity is man's discovery of how the human race can die quickly and not be able to propagate its kind for many long centuries. The real fallacy of nuclear fission for industry is that these so-called deadly poisonous gases from the radioactive elements in reactors and in the waste products which are encased in concrete and buried in the sea to protect human life from their admitted danger are not poisons in their own environment underground where they are serving a necessary purpose of helping to make it possible for organic life to live upon this planet. Man makes them poisonous by removing them from their purposeful environment to place them in an abnormal environment unsuited to their normal environment. Animal and vegetable life are dependent upon the upper few feet of the Earth's crust to live. The soil must have humus, nitrogen, carbonic gas, oxygen, and water. These so-called deadly radioactive poisons are preparing the soil for oxygen-dependent life to live by causing countless billions of microscopic explosions in the rock formations underground to release water and other necessities for human life and vegetation. That is all good. In their proper place in nature, they are fulfilling their necessary and useful purposes. They are vitally necessary where they are. They are of benefit to man when underground or distributed in rocks. It is only when we dig them out from under the ground and condense tons of harmless rock to ounces of deadly free metal, such as uranium piles, that we make the earth uninhabitable for man. The radioactive metals are giving out their quick death to the rocks in which they are embedded for the purpose of expanding the rocks into the soil and water which mothers life. It should not be dug up from the ground to expand human beings into quick death. The above thoughts have been given you for the express purpose of building up in you a full comprehension that man is now attempting to build an environment of death upon the surface of this planet, which has for so many eons been trying to build up an environment for life. He is creating an abnormal environment within which animal and vegetable life cannot possibly live. We desire to show you why radioactive fission in large quantities and oxygen cannot coexist. These elements are fully alive while in their own environment. By taking them out from that environment, they become corpses of themselves. To spread these huge 10-ton reactor corpses throughout the world, and the countless billions of microscopic ones, so that they are in every breath we breathe, every bit of food we eat, and in the water we drink, will eventually be like forcing you to again breathe in a gradually increasing percentage of your own dead breath. All things die from heat expansion. That is the only way any body can die, whether it is your body or the sun's body. All things in nature die normally by slow expansion. Radioactivity is multiplied expansion, which is caused by multiplied compression. It helps man die from explosively quick expansions. Flame is caused by maximum compression. Flame is the ultimate consumer of all bodies. If you will but bear this fact in mind as we proceed, you will more readily comprehend why and how this planet will soon become a barren waste if radioactivity is widely used. You will also comprehend why and how man can explode this planet into millions of fragments or make it become a partially exploding body which we call a nova in the heavens. Do not for a moment think that planets and suns cannot explode. They are continually exploding. There are thousands of novas in the heavens, and space is filled with countless millions of fragments of exploded planets, which we call asteroids and meteorites. 
These are irregular shaped lumps. Nature does not create her forms in lumps. She creates only rings and spheres, which she crystallizes into geometric forms, but they must first be rings and spheres. The one amazing thing about all matter, which is not known today, is that all matter wants to explode. It wants to die. To live is an effort. To die is effortless. Matter is not held together from within by the attraction of gravity as generally supposed. It is compressed together by a force exerted from the outside toward its center. Life is hard to maintain. For that reason, and for the same reason, it is very easy to die because it wants to die. You must understand this fact if you wish to comprehend how radioactivity kills. It is against all modern scientific belief because the general belief is that a material nucleus holds the atom together. Nature does not work that way. Atoms do not have nuclei. Nature creates her atoms the same way that you would compress air into a tire. It is hard work. You pump it in from the outside toward its middle. Then you put a cap on it to imprison it. If it is not sealed and imprisoned, it would escape without your effort. It does not need help to expand. It only needs help to be compressed. Matter is an abnormality. The normality of this universe is a condition of rest and equilibrium. Matter is not an equilibrium. It is a created condition which divides a resistant equilibrium. That division results in tremendous tensions. Tensions are not normal to the universal equilibrium. Tensions have within them a great desire for relief from tension. Decay, death, discharge, explosions, and flame give matter that relief from tensions which it desires. Bear this fact in mind. Remember that the first desire of all creation is mind expression by division of the universal equilibrium. Remember also that the desire to again return to the normal universal equilibrium is equally intensive. To divide an equilibrium requires work. To return to the normality of the universal equilibrium does not require work. Bear in mind, then, that it is hard to live, but easy to die. Radioactivity is making it harder for bodies to live by releasing the tensions which makes them die. You must therefore realize that all things will die normally and naturally without help. That is what radiation is. Multiplied expansion means helping matter to expand quickly, and that is what radioactivity is. The use of nuclear fission, therefore, vastly multiplies the difficulty of living things to keep alive, by vastly aiding them to die. The mystery which we will clarify in this book is to tell how man can be master of life through knowledge instead of letting death master him through ignorance.